What's up guys, it's Jay with Bearded Dad Fishing and today I'm sharing with you guys everything I wish I knew before starting my kayak fishing journey. Now let's face it, there's a ton of information out there, some good, some bad, and some outright terrible information. So I'm hoping this video helps you avoid those same mistakes. But first, dad joke of the day, why couldn't the green pepper practice archery? He didn't have an arrow. And that dad joke is brought to us by Corey over at Bucktail Fishing, so make sure you follow him on Instagram and YouTube. So in addition to my own experience, I asked the guys over at the Kayak Fishing Dads Facebook group what they wish they knew before they started kayak fishing. So this list that we're going over is a compilation of my experience and the experience of 13,000 other guys around the world that do kayak fishing. And I gotta tell you, I don't disagree with any one of these items on the list, but if you disagree, make sure you comment it down below and let me know, we'll get talking. And the first thing I wish I knew before starting kayak fishing is the fact that all kayaks are not created equal. There's a ton of different options and hundreds and hundreds of different kayaks to choose from, and there's gonna be big differences along that group of kayaks, from the size, the weight, the weight capacity, whether it has a pedal drive or a motor, or if it's just paddle, and most importantly, the budget as well. So you have to do your research based on your needs because John, his kayak might be really good for him, but it's not gonna be a good kayak for Tim and, and Robert because they fish differently. So do your research based on where you fish. Do you fish rivers? Do you fish big waters? Do you fish tiny creeks or ponds? So that's gonna change what type of kayak you need and which one you think is a great fit for you. You also have to look at the options that you need in a kayak. Do you need a ton of storage, maybe for longer trips or some kayak camping? Do you need a ton of rails? Uh, do you need a warranty? That's something to think about because not all kayak manufacturers offer warranties and certainly all the warranties are not the same. There's a big difference between the warranties offered by Old Town and Hobie and Native and uh, Lifetime. Like it's, it's all gonna be different and you have to make the best decision of what's best for you. And lastly, of course, the budget is the probably the biggest factor for a lot of anglers out there looking for their first kayak. And I break down these budgets, uh, these price ranges in four different groups. You have your $500 to $1,000 kayaks. You have your $1,000 to $2,500 kayaks. And then you have your $2,500 to $4,000 kayaks. And yes, believe it or not, you can get kayaks that are $4,000 plus, And there's, there's actually plenty of them out there. So you have to make the best decision with that budget in mind. And the second thing I wish I knew about kayak fishing is the fact that kayak fishing is not cheaper than going a different route. I jumped in thinking this was gonna be the cheapest way to go and like a lot of guys, you find out that you start spending more and more and more and you decide, well, if I'm gonna get a $1,500 kayak, then maybe I should get the $2,500 kayak and it just goes up from there. And once you buy the kayak, then you're talking about the accessories. Are you gonna get a fish finder? If so, fish finders could be 100 bucks all the way to 1500 or more. What accessories are you gonna buy? Um, are you gonna get a motor? Are you gonna get a battery? And what kind of battery are you gonna get to go with that? So all these things really start to add up at the end of the day. And you can make it a minimalist approach, so don't get me wrong. If you only have $500 to go all in, you can get on the water with that, but you're gonna be very limited um, in your options. I made a video of what my entire setup cost me and I'll make sure to post a link down below, but I was super surprised at the end of it how much I ended up paying for my entire kayak setup. And the third thing I wish I knew, which was also the most common response in the group, is to buy your second kayak first. And I know that could be a hard pill to swallow. We're talking about budget a lot so far, but a lot of guys regret getting the cheaper option and then selling it to get the more expensive option that they really wanted at the end of it. A lot of times the better option is just to save a little bit more, go without for a little season, and then get what you really want. Because at the end of the day, you could be spending a lot more money by buying something, modding it out, and then selling it, and then buying something else and modding it out as well. Uh, so it can add up real quick. So that's just my advice is to wait to get what you really want. And number four is that fishing kayaks are heavy. They're super heavy. A lot of them are 100 pounds or more. So don't come in with the expectation that you're gonna sling this thing over your shoulder and walk it to shore. That's just not reality. So make sure you're physically able to move these kayaks. And the bigger the kayak you get, of course, the heavier it's gonna be. A lot of guys end up getting a 12 footer 
and they they find out man this is not too easy to move around so then they size down to a 10 and a half feet or 10 feet or something like that so make sure you're able to move it around make sure you get the right transport method as well so whatever you need to get it from your car to the water so whether that's the yak attack bunkster the wilderness systems car or something else i did a video comparing the wilderness systems car and the much cheaper Viver heavy duty cart as well so i'll copy it down below so you guys can take a look at that you don't have to spend a ton of money for a really good cart but the best way to move around a heavy kayak is a trailer now i used to be part of that group that said oh if i have to get a trailer for my kayak i'm gonna just go to boat rah, 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 old man stuff Shut up, bro. Just get the trailer. You're going to love it. It makes staging a breeze. It makes launching a breeze. And you don't have to break your back doing it. Everything is so much simpler with a trailer. It does add to the cost value because these trailers can get expensive. But there's also some good used options as well. I was very intimidated learning how to back up a trailer. But I learned very quickly. By that first time on the water, it took me 15 to 20 tries. After that, it was a breeze and it was like nothing. So I totally recommend getting a trailer. I'm never going to go back to carting my kayak if I can help it and the fifth thing guys wish they knew before they started kayak fishing is to get the pedals this was the second most popular response on the Facebook group when I asked the guys what they wish they knew and they wish that they would have bought the pedal drives first it's worth the investment it is more expensive anywhere from a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars just for adding the pedal drive system but it makes your life easier on the water especially if you're fighting a lot of wind you don't have to put down your rod to then paddle and then pick up your rod and then the wind blows you and then you got to do the whole thing over. When you have a pedal drive, you can just paddle in the same spot without having to move around too much. It's pretty much hands-free and it allows you to use your legs, which you're not doing anything with anyways while you're fishing. So you're just moving along while you're fighting the fish, fighting the wind, fighting the current, whatever it is. And if you really, really can't squeeze that money out right now, there's lots of good options of kayaks you can buy that are paddle only that are upgradable to a pedal drive system. Like the new canoe Unlimited or Frontier, the Vibe Shearwater, the Van Hunks Elite Pro Angler, all of these are upgradable. So you could buy it as a paddle only kayak and then later on spend the money to get the pedal drive system and keep the same kayak. And if you guys want to get more involved with the Bearded Dad Fishing community, become a channel member. There's lots of great perks like early access to videos, behind the scene videos, swag, and so much more. I'll put all the information down below and hopefully I'll see you on the other side as a channel member. And number six is that guys wished they knew how to fish before buying a fishing kayak. That might sound silly, but it's a critical tip. That was a very popular response as well in the Facebook group that fishing needs to be learned before kayak fishing can be learned because then you're learning two things at once. If you're learning how to fish and at the same time learning how to kayak, it just makes it more difficult. Try to get the, at least the basics, the basic understanding of fishing before you jump on something else that you have to control. Again, you have to control the kayak from wind, from current. You have to do multiple things at once and learning those at the same time is very difficult. So it's important to learn the basic of your lures, your rods and reels, the seasonality of the fish that you're targeting, the specific species that you want to target. All of, there's a lot of learning to come in fishing, obviously, and you're not going to know all of it before you get to kayak fishing. You're never going to know all about fishing, but learning just the basics of fishing before you jump into kayak fishing will help you out a lot and will make the whole transition from land to water a lot smoother. And number seven is the fact that weather matters. This is very understated and a lot of guys don't think about this, but you have to be prepared because small changes in the forecast can have major implications on the water, especially if you're fishing offshore, if you're fishing big water, if you're fishing rivers, these changes can happen a lot quicker and without much notice. So it's important to be totally connected into what the weather forecast is and make sure you have your safety gear with you at all times. Now, this is a non-negotiable for me. No matter where I'm at, I will have my safety gear with me. So make sure you have a good PFD, one that you are comfortable with and one that you're wearing. It's not enough to have it in the tank well behind you. If you're fishing big water or again, offshore, have a marine uh, radio, 
in case you have to talk to someone for help or you might not have cell phone signal out there, have your whistle, have your first aid kit, just be ready. Obviously you don't wanna cut your day short, but most importantly, you wanna come back to your family, so make sure you are safe on the water. One of the best ways to stay on top of the weather is with the Omnia Fishing Premium Pro subscription. It's only $50 a year, which is an incredible value, but you can stay on top of the temperature, the precipitation, the wind, which is a big one, uh, any storms rolling in, but it also lets you combine that with other useful information, such as the contour maps, bottom hardness, vegetation, and all the things you need to know all in one spot. And again, for only $50 a year, it's an incredible deal and something that you can use to plan your trips and stay up to date while you're on the water. And the eighth thing I wish I knew before starting to kayak fish is that modifications can wait. Again, this is one of the more popular responses when I asked the Facebook group, guys wish they would have waited to mod out their kayaks. There's a lot of options out there and the reality is you won't know what you need till you spend some time on the water with your kayak. It's easy to go overboard and buy all the things that you want and spend hundreds, if not thousands of dollars in accessories and gear, gear tracks, fish finders, uh, tackle boxes, all types of things. So that's one of the better tips out there to help you save some money when you're kayak fishing is to just wait a little bit, get out on the water, figure out what you like about your kayak, what you wish you had, and then just base your decisions on that and you can save some money in the long run. And number nine on our list of things I wish I knew before kayak fishing is that storage is important. You have to think to yourself, where are you gonna keep this kayak when it's not on the water? Like we discussed, these fishing kayaks are huge. They can be 12, 13, 14 feet long. So are you gonna keep it in your garage? Are you gonna have it on a rack outside? Both options are okay, but you wanna make sure that it's safe from the sun because those UV rays will beat it up and make that plastic brittle. It's safe from rodents and, and rats and everything else. We don't want that. So make sure it's safe from rodents, the sun, the weather, all that stuff. And where are you keeping it in the winter time? You know, Florida and Texas, you don't count, so move on. But the rest of us that have cold weather and we might not fish for a couple months on our kayak, where do you keep it in the winter time where it's safe? So just good things to process to make sure you have the space for these kayaks. And the 10th thing I wish I knew before I started kayak fishing is that you need to buy right. Make sure that you invest this money, which is in most cases thousands of dollars, the right way. If you have the possibility, demo your kayak. There's a lot of dealers around the country that have demo days two, three, four times a year, especially in the summertime where you can try a variety of kayaks for free. So take advantage of this. Talk to your local dealers, even if you have to make a trip out of it and drive two or three hours away. Do it and get on these kayaks that you're thinking about buying, you might find out that this kayak is not the right one for you, or it doesn't feel as stable, or it doesn't have the accessories that you would prefer. And the next way to buy right is to buy used. Don't discount the used kayak, because a lot of guys get on the water with these kayaks and they realize it's too heavy, it's too slow, uh, I don't fish as much as I thought I was gonna fish, I wish I had this kayak, and they sell their kayak and you can get a 20, 30, 40% discount on a used kayak that's been on the water less than 10 times. So make sure you look around Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, wherever they sell used stuff because you can find some really good deals out there. And buying used will allow you to have less financial risk. Make sure you check on the warranties first because a lot of these warranties are not transferable. And ask the seller as well if you can try it on the water and you can keep an eye on any leaks or anything funky going on as well. And if this video was helpful, please subscribe to the channel and check out my favorite kayaks for big guys like me right here. So till next time guys, peace and God bless.